Hello, Dan Harvey for Boris FX here with a look at creating titles in Blackmagic Resolve with BCC Title Studio and the power of presets for the quick creation of graphic elements. I'll begin by creating a lower third preset from scratch. The techniques I'll be using in Title Studio are valid for any BCC host, but the initial steps for adding a title layer in Resolve are slightly different. I'll begin by duplicating the video track I want to add the titles to by alt dragging it to the V2 track in the edit menu. In the color menu I'll select the V2 track and drag the BCC Title Studio effect to the serial node in my pipeline. The default text object is added. I'll right click on the output from my node pipeline and add an alpha output. Now I'll right click on my Title Studio node and select Use OFX Alpha. The Title Studio effect in V2 is now composited over the background track in V1. Now I'll hit the Launch UI window button to launch the Title Studio UI. The default layout shows the parameter window in the upper left where I can adjust parameter values and see the result in the preview window in the upper right. Alternatively I can select a transform widget from the toolbar and make adjustments in the preview window. In the timeline window in the lower right I can scrub the timeline positioner to a new frame and add a keyframe. The currently selected keyframe is highlighted in red and its parameters are displayed in the parameter window. I can click in the keyframe type box to select a keyframe interpolation type and scrub to preview the animation between the two keyframes I've created. In the track window on the lower left I'll select the scene container and delete all of the scene contents with the backspace key to start from an empty project. In the media type drop down I'll select flat text to add a flat text object and the default text object is added, spelling out Boris effects in the default style. In the parameters window I'll select the text tab, highlight my text and select a font and size. In the track window I'll select the texture track to see advanced text parameters, select the shadow tab and enable a drop shadow. Now I'll switch back to the text tab in the parameters window, highlight the text I want to replace and enter the required copy. I'll select the flat texture track in the track window and adjust its crop properties in the parameters window. I'll go to one second on the timeline and add a linear start keyframe for the crop value. Now I'll go to two seconds on the timeline and add an end keyframe for the crop and set its interpolation to hold so it holds this value up to the end of the clip. Now I'd like to add a bar behind the text, so I'll go to the add media button in the track window and select a spline primitive default shape is a rectangle. As it's above my text in the track list it's drawn in front. I'll move it down the track list so that it's drawn behind my text. If I select the material texture track I can choose a different shape type if required. I'll stick with rectangle and adjust its edge properties so that it aligns with my text. I want rounded corners so I'll adjust the corner size accordingly. Now I'll switch to the Fill tab and set the Colour and Opacity. In the Border tab I'll set the Colour and Width for the border. I'll go to one second on the timeline and add a Hold keyframe for the ending Y position. Now I'll go to the Start frame and add a linear keyframe for the initial Y position so that the bar moves into position over one second. Now we'll take a moment to explore the subtle but important difference between crop texture and crop output. When I adjust crop texture the crop result follows the position of the object. When I adjust crop output the crop remains in a fixed position and the object moves relative to it. I'll adjust the crop output and softness values for the bottom in order to move the bar into frame behind a soft edge wipe. Now I'm satisfied with my title I'll hit apply to close the title studio UI and return to the resolve timeline to view the result. 
I can now go to the preset drop down and select save preset to save this for later recall. Before we take a deeper look at working with presets, it's worth examining a couple of important nuances of the animation workflow in Title Studio. There are keyframes for all objects at the start and end of the timeline, and I'll change the project settings to illustrate how they behave. The Auto Keyframe button is enabled here, so when I change the position value of the Transform tool, a keyframe is automatically set and the keyframe type updates in the parameter window. Now when I scrub the timeline the position animates back to the initial values stored at the start and end frames. To disable this behaviour I'll go to Edit, Project Settings and enable Hold Parameter Values so that the position parameter is held at the value I set at the keyframe I created. This is my preferred setting as it avoids the creation of unexpected keyframes. Now we'll take a look at another important animation concept in Title Studio, the Rigid Run. I'll load a preset and select Advanced Mode to open it in the Title Studio UI. This clip is 5 seconds long and the animation completes at 2 seconds. Now I'll select a 25 second clip in the timeline and apply the same preset. Note how the animation is stretched to fit the longer clip so the animation completes at 10 seconds. To preserve the duration of the selected keyframes I can add a rigid run. I'll return to the preset on the original 5 second clip, right click in the timeline and select add rigid run. The rigid run is indicated by a shaded track at the top of the timeline. I'll trim it to include the 2 second title build I've set up, apply it and save a new preset. Now I'll load the new preset to the longer clip. Note how the duration of the two second build is preserved when the rigid run is applied. We've uploaded a number of presets as a zip file for you to try out. Unzip them to your required folder, add the title studio effect and launch the preset browser. The default location of the preset browser points to the factory presets supplied with BCC10 as shown in the folder properties. Select Choose Folder and point to the folder with the new presets. Select this folder and its contents are displayed in the browser. There's a variety of effects included but I've been conservative with my font choices as every host will have a different set of fonts installed. I've stuck to the Arial font family as this is ubiquitous. Selecting a preset and hitting apply will load it to the resolve timeline. To edit it, click launch UI window. In the track list we can see the various elements which make up this lower third graphic. If I select the inner circle we can see how its scale is animated. The border end property of the outer circle is animated, drawing it on over time. I'll select the text in the text tab and type over it to replace it. I'll change its font and colour. I'd like to group these elements and duplicate them, so I'll command select them, that's control select on Windows, and choose a new 3D container from the media list. Now the elements are grouped within the 3D container. I'll right click on the container and rename it. Right click again and select duplicate. Now I can reposition the duplicated line and repeat these steps for the third line. Now I'd like to offset the animations in time, so I'll twirl open the tracks I'd like to modify, select the keyframes and drag them to a new position on the timeline. Now the second line's animation starts later. I'll repeat these steps for the third line 
and hit apply to return to the resolve timeline. Now I can save my modified preset for later recall. I'll open the browser and select the next preset. This over the shoulder build contains an image. Images can be added to the project by selecting them from the media list. To change an image, select its media icon in the track view, choose image file and navigate to the location of the new image. Now I'll return to the preset browser and load a preset containing an image whose location has changed. When I open the Title Studio UI, a dialog box alerts me to the fact that the image can't be found. I'll select Replace and navigate to the new location of the image. Note how the file's alpha channel is used to composite the image. As in the previous example, I can select the track's media icon, choose Image File and navigate to the location of the new image. In the next example, I have a circle with an animated border. I'll switch to the Composite tab in the Parameters window and change the Opacity and Transfer mode for this layer to change the way it blends with the other layers. I'll repeat this step for the text layer to explore some more blending variations. Next I'll clear my scene and take a look at title containers, which enable quick, automatic, character-based animations. I'll select the title container from Media Types and set its animation to Type On. Now I'll modify the default text style as required. I want a flatter lighting state here, so I'll select the Scene Transformations track, select the Lighting tab and adjust the light position. Now I'll switch to the Title Animation tab and enable the Type On animation. I'll set the Type On duration to be 25% of the clip length. When I set the starting fade value to 0, keyframes are inserted automatically for each character fading from 0 to 100% opacity. I'll repeat these steps for the spin value. Now I'll return to the browser and load a preset created with the title container. Next we'll take a look at deformers, which apply procedurally animated spatial effects to layers. I'll select the layer I want to deform, open the deformer list and select the pulse deformer. The pulse deformer has various modes. I'll select the approach mode, which moves the object forwards and backwards in the Z axis. There are various pulse modes. I'll select beat. We've included several examples of deformers in the presets, including Ripple, as shown in this example. The Mesh Shatter Deformer, shown in this example, offers a number of interesting ways to destroy your layers. Keep in mind that in the render options for the scene, Motion Blur may be enabled for all effects. The final example uses the Mesh Chaos Deformer to apply an organic deformation to the text layers. The radial wipe in the background layer is generated by a gradient object. I've set the alpha transparency of the gradient stops to achieve the hard radial edges. I can edit the number of repeat steps and animate the loop phase to achieve the animation effect. Once you've created a preset, it can be reused on subsequent occasions by simply retyping over the text. We hope you have fun with the presets we've supplied for this session and that you get some inspiration for building your own unique effects with BCC Title Studio. Thanks for watching. For further insights into the BCC toolset, check out the tutorials at borisfx.com.